regional world war possible as Israel continues to provoke full-scale confrontation with Syria. That's exactly what they want. You got to remember that Bibi Netanyahu works directly for the Rothschilds. He has been since the 70s. So we already know that the Oded Yenin plan spells out that Syria has to go and then Iran. Those are the last two on their uh, plan for this greater Israel project. The war in Syria is heating up yet again with signs that the conflict may soon be about to take greater international dimensions. This is due to the greater Israel partition and aggression in Syria against the Syrian military and on behalf of terrorist organizations fighting against the Syrian government. The questions that remain, however, are whether or not the Israelis are willing to attempt the resolve of the anti-terrorism coalition of Syria, Hezbollah, Iran, and Russia, and how steadfast the resolve of these powers might actually be. In the past week, we have seen an escalation in the Syrian conflict, the likes of which have not been seen for decades in terms of Israeli-Syrian tensions, as well as the potential for a clash of nuclear world powers in the Middle East as a combat theater. This wouldn't be a pretty picture. But like I said, this is what they want. After a mobilization of U.S. troops near Monbij, designated to prevent Syrian military for retaking the city as a means of to stop combat between uh, Turkish and Kurdish forces, yeah, right. Israel launched an airstrike on Syrian targets near Palmyra, the Zionist settler state's furthest penetration into Syria yet. Israel claimed it was bombing an Iranian Hezbollah weapons convoy, while the Syrian government claimed that Israel had targeted Syrian military positions who were in the process of combating ISIS. Regardless, Israel clearly violated international law and the concept of national sovereignty. This time, however, Israel was not able to bomb and bail like they usually do. You know, you hit and run uh, and then wait for somebody to come to your aid like the U.S. Anyway, so like they have done in the past as Syrian air defense systems were mobilized and an Israeli jet was shot down as a result. This shoot down was apparently launched after the Syrian military informed the Russian military uh, of its intention to shoot down the Israeli planes. It is assumed that the Russians did not object to the use of force. That is not the use of force. That's called defense. Okay, indeed, Russian Marines were only a few kilometers away from where the Syrian military was attacked. After the attack, the Russian government summoned the Israeli ambassador, Gary Koren, to demand an explanation of the operation. This, in and of itself, is an unprecedented event. Very soon after the shootdown, both Syria and Israel engaged in war of words and threats regarding any future incidents. For instance, Israel Defense Minister Evigdor Lieberman uh, stated that the next time that the Syrians use air defense systems against our planes, we will destroy them without the slightest hesitation. Syria's ambassador to the United Nations, Dr. Bashar al Jaafri, uh, also responded to the incident with uh, statements of his own. Putin sent a clear message. He said, The fact that the Israeli ambassador to Russia was summoned for a conversation only a day after he submitted his credentials to the Russian foreign ministry, uh, that was last Thursday, and was told categorically that the game was over. Jaafri pointed out that the attack has changed the rules of the game and that Syria will not sit idly by while Israel attacks its forces. Good on Syria. But on Sunday, a new incident arose with the Israelis launching an airstrike in Kunirta, location near the Golan Heights. Syrian news media reported the incident first, saying that the militia commander had been killed in a strike. 
Lebanese television station Al Mayandin identified the man killed as Yasser Asayed, a member of the National Defense uh, Militia. He was a commander of the Golan Brigade, a Druze militia fighting alongside the Syrian military against terrorists. The assassination was allegedly conducted by virtue of an unmanned Israeli drone. On March 19th and 20th, Israeli launched more strikes on the Lebanese-Syrian border, supposedly targeting a Hezbollah weapons supply convoy. On Monday, March 20th, an Israeli drone was shot down over the Golan area, allegedly by Syrian aerial defense systems. Hezbollah paraded pictures of the downed drone on its social media pages as proof that it was shot down, forcing Israel to admit that the UAV indeed had been brought down. And the Israelis have yet to stop their aggression. In fact, despite having been warned by the Syrian government and having apparently angered Russia over the initial airstrikes, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is doubling down on the uh, perceived Israel right to bomb anyone, anywhere, anytime without consequences. And what's Trump have to say about this shit? Only thing I heard him say so far, but I'll dig a little bit more on that one, was about their building 2,500 new illegal uh, homes in Israel. And he just said, ah, that's not a good idea. But outside of that, nothing. If there was any feasible form of intelligence and military standpoint, we would attack, and so it will continue, said Netanyahu during his visit to China. He added that he informed President Putin of Israel's intentions. Really? On Wednesday, March 22nd, Israel launched more airstrikes deeper inside Syrian territory, targeting Syrian army posts near the capital, Damascus. This marks the fourth Israeli airstrike operation in Syria within one week. Uh, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov uh, stated that Russia is relying on Israel to abide by its agreements that were established during Netanyahu's official state visit to Russia earlier in March, where the two men held extensive talks regarding the Syrian crisis. We will judge not by their statements, but by their actions to what extent our Israeli partners are sticking to these agreements, said Lavrov. Well, if you're claiming them as your partner, uh, there's a problem with that. Syrian President Assad uh, told Russian MPs visiting Syria that he is counting on Russia to do something about any full-scale uh, Israeli airstrike on Syria in avoiding any full-scale war with Israel. Israel has been regularly bombing Syria over the last decade with an increasing uh, attacks taking place since the western back destabilization began in, in 2011. In 2017, however, have seen the biggest concentration of attacks thus far. But while the conflict between Syria and Israel heats up, the ever-present suicidal American readiness to fight and die to the last American to preserve Israel also comes into play. In the past, the United States, due to geopolitical interest and vastly higher levels than that of the Oval Office, the immense sums of money used to purchase members of Congress and the extraordinary religious brainwashing of many American Christians, the United States is always poised to leap into World War III to protect its little Jewish ulcer, the biggest destabilizing factor in the Middle East. Assad's comments and Israel's behaviors reveal that a full-scale war is bubbling just below the surface, perhaps only hours away. Comments coming from a number of Israeli officers only a week ago has made it clear that Israel would naturally draw Hezbollah into such a war as well, perhaps involving Iran, if for no other reason than the fact that Iran is the principal patron of the militia group. The question would then become whether or not 
Russia will simply allow Israel to undo all of the anti-terrorist work it has undertaken since it became involved in militarily in Syria. The United States is another wild card, having instigated the entire crisis and having been an unwavering goon for Israel since the settler state's beginning. At this point, we would be witnessing the steep drop-off to not only regional war, but also potentially a world war of unimaginable proportions. Hopefully, for the sake of the world, Russia will be able to talk Netanyahu from leading the world into conflagration, but given the Israeli penchant for being unreasonable, we at least hope that the United States will not sacrifice itself to become further emboldened in the Syrian conflict on Israel's behalf. I've been saying this was coming, and I'm figuring it's on Trump's watch for a purpose. As you see in my last report, which I just got through uh, loading to the internet, the Warhawks, all the 9-11 criminals, everybody's trying to inch their way in to the Trump circle so that they can push and prod and make their little shekels out of the military industrial complex by putting America into the war. Well, back to Netanyahu and him working for the Rothschilds. Here's what needs to happen. You need to arrest a fucking asshole. And I'll tell you right now, people need to figure out how they can round up all these Rothschilds that's fucking pulling these strings. And as a matter of fact, there's other bankers, not just Rothschilds, eh, at least six major, major banks, families, I guess you could say. These guys need to be rounded up and either made poor. It's <laughs> a good way to fuck their heads up. Or uh, off their ass. I fuck this shit, man. It, it's time to stop playing around. You know, so with that, Mardo out. With that, Mardo out.